I cut the check, I cut the check, I cut the check Tell my niggas we up next, so we up next She shot a text, she shot a text, she shot a text Kill the p- I might put the bitch to rest Put a nigga on that same shit I've been ballin' with my niggas, Kevin King Bridge Oh, you drippy, but you better tuck your chain quick What's good, y'all, man? We back again with another episode of Between the Lines. And today we come back with the same series, me coming to y'all, talking about some really underrated players in the league. But first of all, man, I just want to say thank y'all for the love y'all gave me on the last video. When I put that video out, I wasn't really sure how I was going to do. I knew the title was kind of good. Um, the thumbnail, thumbnail was pretty good, even though I didn't make it. It was just a picture of B.I. But I didn't expect it to give me... 129 views, 10 hours watch. I gained like six, seven subscribers from it. Um, multiple people DM me. I just want to say thank y'all for that, man. Y'all don't know that video was hard. I didn't take my allergy pills that day. I was sneezing, blowing my nose in the middle of the video. Y'all seen it? It was a lot of cuts in that video. I had to stop that video so many times. I was stuttering, bro. So thank y'all for the love y'all gave me on that video, man. And today. We're going to continue on with this series, man. Today, I think it's going to be another good one, another banger, man. So, let's get into it, man. Today, we're here to talk about a specific young underrated player. Like, this is, like, literally underrated. Like, the circumstances he's in, that's why I feel like he's underrated. Jordan Poole. When we talk about young players in the league, I feel like Jordan Poole might be at the top of, like, underrated players. Because, let's look at this draft. Bleacher Report just came out with this last week. Um, they came out with a 2019 redraft. That's when Jordan Poole was drafted. He was drafted number 32 by the 32, 28 by the Warriors. Here's the, here's the top 14 that they said they were redraft. So this is basically the lottery: Zion Williamson, John Moran, R.J. Barrett, Matisse Thybul, Tyler Hero, Darius Garland, DeAndre Hunter, Taylor Horn Tucker, Nikhil Alexander, Alexander Walker, Cam Johnson, Brandon Brandon Clark. PJ PJ Washington, Rui Hachimura, and Lou Dirt, Lou Dort. So now I'm about to go through this list and tell you the players that I would take over Jordan Poole. Zion Williamson, John Moran, RJ Barrett, Darius Garland, DeAndre Hunter. That's it. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I'm taking Jordan Poole over Lou Dort, Rui Hachimura, PJ Washington, Brandon Clark. Brandon Clark just got benched. He got benched. He was really good. I don't understand why he got benched, but he got benched. Cam Johnson. Yeah, I'm taking Jordan Poole over Cam Johnson. Nah, I'm not taking him over. I forgot to say Nikhil. Yeah, I'm taking Nikhil over Cam, uh, Jordan Poole. Taylor Horn Tucker. Jordan, yeah, the media make it Taylor Horn Tucker one of the most overrated players in the league. I'm not even going to lie to you, bro. He's not going to reach that superstardom that the media think he's going to reach with the Lakers. He's just not. Maybe when LeBron and... Leaves probably he can be the second fiddle of the AD, but he's not. He's not. DeAndre Hunter, yeah, I, I'm taking him. I'm taking D- Darius Garland. I'm taking RJ J- Ja and Zion. That's six players out of the 14 players that I'm taking over Jordan Poole. Jordan Poole is better than Tyler Hero. He's better than Matisse. Matisse is just one side of the ball. If Matisse add another, uh, just a, a consistent three point shot, he'll be nasty. But he's just not consistent at all. But everybody else, bro, I'm taking Jordan Poole over, under over them. But here's the reason why I feel like Jordan Poole is underrated. So let's just talk about his story. From the beginning of his career, went to Michigan. I'm not even going to sit here and lie to y'all and act like I watched him in Michigan. The only real reason why I knew him coming out of Michigan, and this is probably why everybody knew him coming out of Michigan, that one buzzer beat a three when he hit the shot, he just got the ball, just threw it up, cash, ran off the court. That's how I knew him coming out of Michigan. Then I did some research because that, I think that was right around when I was starting my podcast. I did some research and um, I seen that he was just a decent shooter. Um, any team could really use a shooter, so I guess he he was good enough to get drafted. He got drafted to number twenty eight. Now at that time, him getting drafted that high was kind of questionable, especially when you had guys behind him like Kelvin Johnson, Kevin Porter Jr. But looking back on it, bro. Especially looking back on it from from right now, the Warriors made the right pick. Let's get into it, bro. So, his rookie year, bro, when it comes to me, bro, I kind of forget about... I just want to forget about 2019, 2020, because that year was just so confusing. Like, this first half of the year, 
banging. Started off fun. Um, only thing bad, bad about it, um, Steph Curry got hurt. But other than that, All-Star game, fun as hell. Then right after All-Star game, COVID. Shut it all down. I forgot about literally, the. I forgot about 2019, 2020. He came in, he came in, averaged eight points, two assists, 33 from the field, 27 from the uh, three. So, not going to lie, he was terrible. <laughs> I was just watching some of his rookie highlights. He was terrible. But he saw a lot of flashes. And for him to bounce back after having that terrible year and having a great underrated sophomore year to me where he averaged 12 points, one assist, which is really surprising, bro. For him to average less assists than he did in his first year, really surprising, but I kind of know why. But, yeah, that's really surprising. Um, Shot 43 from the field, 35 from three. Now let's get into why I feel like he does, he's he's a really good player and that needs to get talked about a lot. When it comes to the Warriors, bro, he fits perfectly. When it comes to off-ball shooting, that's something that he can do. 35 from three. They set screens for him a lot, especially when steps on the court. They off the court. They set screens for him a lot. Draymond sets a lot of pick and roll screens for him a lot, and. I'm talking about off-ball screens because he's a quality shooter. He can shoot on the ball, off-ball. He can do it all. When it comes to his spot-up shooting, he shoots 35% from three. That's something that out of college a lot of people knew he can do. But judging off of that first year, it was kind of up in the air. Like, bro, you just shot 27% from three. Jeez. You damn near almost shot more than you did from three than you did from the field. Jeez. But for him to bounce back and hit 35 from three, Yes, that's why he got more opportunity this year. He started off in the G League this year. I don't think people realize that. He started off in the G League bubble. He was down there with Nico Mann and um, Jeremy Lin and him. I think he only played like two games with them, though. Like, he completely dogged and just dipped. <laughs> so, so, in the beginning of the year, man, I was um just on YouTube, right? And I seen this Warriors fan page. I always try to plug people I watch, but I can't remember his name. He's like an older dude, let's can do his name, like Alchemy Academy, something like that. Alchemist Academy. I don't even know if that's a good or bad word, but yeah, his name sounds like that. Look him up. He's actually a really good YouTuber. I watched a couple of his videos. But he's a Warriors, he's a Warriors page, right? And one of his videos was about using Jordan Poole as a ball handler off the bench. And starting starting off, they didn't really use him like that. I'm not gonna sit here and act like they watched his video, but when they started using Jordan Jordan Poole as a ball handler, as a point guard off the bench, that's when the Warriors started taking off. When you look at this team, bro, it's only a couple consistent offensive options. It's Steph Curry, a little bit of Wiggins, and it's Jordan Poole. And I feel like the Warriors used that to the fullest this year. A thing that jumps off the page for me with Jordan Poole is his handle. His handle is crazy. I'm talking about hesitation, cro um, crossover, it's crazy. And he's able to use that anytime when he needs to. He's able to create his own shot. That's something that the Warriors need a lot off the bench. Until they got Kelly Oubre off the bench. But when they had, when you look at their bench, it was Ken Bazemore, Damian Lee, Michael Mortar, um, Marquis Chris, uh, Nico Mannion. Players that just wasn't able to create their shots like that. So if Steph goes on the bench, if Andrew Wiggins is not playing on the bench, because usually he plays with the bench unit, they're not really getting a lot of scoring. And that's when Jordan Poole came in. He really dogged. Like, that's when he took off. He's a three-level scorer that really doesn't get talked about. A three-level scorer, he can shoot from anywhere on the court, score from anywhere on the court. When it comes to his scoring, it's just second-hand to him. It doesn't really look like it. It looks effortless all the time. It looks effortless. Um, He really does thrive off of pick-and-rolls, though, which literally is a pick-and-roll league. So, there's not, nothing wrong with that. But he thrives off them shits. He knows how to use them shits to the fullest. He'll shoot off that shit or he'll die. It's, just, it's secondhand to him. When you look at him, bro, if you try to give him a comparison, it's Jordan Clarkson. They play just alike. Like, Jordan, Jordan Clarkson don't use that much screens. He's not really a playmaker. But when it comes to scoring, they're going to get their shots up. And nobody's going to stop them from getting their shots up. I can't. I wish I would have wrote this down. But dude averaged 12 points off the bench. He's going to get his shots up, and that's going to be key for the Warriors as of right now, they are trying to go back into that contention. They don't really have a bench piece, and Jordan Poole can step up and be that bench piece. Don't be surprised if Jordan Poole wins six man of the year this year. I've been expecting him to have, to have an even better year than he had last year. But to go back into the studying about him, man, 
another thing that really doesn't get talked about enough when you talk about Jordan Poole, you really talk about his scoring when you talk about him. But when his pla- his passing and his playmaking is something that jumps off the page in me. I was watching some of his rookie highlights, bro. After I watched that video from that dude, I really cannot remember his name. But shout out to him. His passing is something that I've really seen in his rookie highlights. Like, talking about cross-court passes, um, passes off the pick and roll. It's really not that hard for him to do because he creates such space and he creates such attention because his handle bro he's able to attack the defense at all times he can attack the paint at all times and it's automatically going to draw draw a double and he's able to hit that pass to the corner or to the pass up top it's, it's second hand to him it's really not hard for him to do so that was something that jumped off the page this year and that's why i was surprised when i seen this assist that it decreased this year because i actually like seen it this year like I actually, nobody was watching the Warriors in 2019. Soon as Steph got out, Game Three, nobody was watching the Warriors, so I didn't see it in 2019. In 2020, 2021, bro, that's when I actually was watching the Warriors, and I was like, Yo, Jordan Poole is nice, bro, and he's not just a shooter. I'm not just a shooter, not just a scorer. He's a playmaker. He can play the point if he wants to. Like he's like that KPJ type guy. They came in as a shooting guard, but they're actually really good playmakers, and he is their backup point guard. And He's going to have a huge year this year. But another thing that stands out to me, bro, his finishing is crazy. He's not the most athletic guy in the league. Not the most athletic guy, just on his team. He's not that athletic. But he will go up on you. I'm not talking about he'll dunk on you. He'll go up on you and try to just finish strong over you. i seen a highlight. He finished strong over Ben Simmons like it was nothing. He went. He seen it was Ben Simmons right, right, right. Damn. He seen it was Ben Simmons in the paint and just ran straight to him. Finished with his left hand. He did that to Jonas Valanciunas too. That's two of the strongest players in the league. He's not afraid to go up on you at all. And that's something that like stands out the page to me, bro. He's, he's really out there just not caring. Not saying that's a bad thing or nothing. Not saying like he just doesn't care about the team. Like, bro, he's going to get his buckets and he's going to score. And it's in an effective way. He can score on either side of the um, either side of the rim, left or right hand. It's really nothing. Like Jordan Poole is a dog, bro. Is he's a dog, bro? He's a dog. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm expecting him to have a huge year, bro. Like if you look at the games that he had last year, um, from March 17th to March 26th, he averaged 20 points. Um, four assists, 46 from the field, 40, 40 from the three. He's he's a player that can jump off and just drop 40 out of, out of nowhere. I want to say that second to last game against the Memphis Grizzlies, he dropped 38. So he can jump out of nowhere and just drop 40. If Steph has an off, if he's having an off night, bro, Jordan Poole going to be there. Um, the last 10, 10 games of the season, he averaged 16 points, three assists on 45% from the field and 35 from the three. He is going to be a huge piece for them off the bench, especially since they lost Kelly Oubre. So it's not really a player off the bench taking the shots up. Um, I hope they don't start him because when you look at their two, I hope they start Michael Mortar because he's just a spot up shooter. That's all they really need in that starting lineup. Steph and Andrew Wiggins are the scorers. He should have the full keys to the bench, and that should help him out a lot. Because he didn't really have that last year, bro. They like they like to play Andrew Williams with the second lineup. And then the second half of the season, Kelly Oubre got hurt. But then when he came back, he was on the bench. And he was on that bench unit. And he kind of took away some of the shots from Jordan Poole. But Jordan Poole, if he gets all his shots, if he gets the full keys to the bench, he's going to have a huge year. I know y'all seen our last game against the Lakers and the um, Memphis Grizzlies, bro. He dogged. <laughs> he dogged. And that one play on LeBron just to show you all. You see how he created that shot. Crossed up Wesley, crossed up Wesley Matthews. Got up on LeBron. Got fell. Didn't finish the dunk. But would have dunked on LeBron. He's a talented player, bro. When you look at the players in this draft class, like I said, bro, he better than Tyler Hero. Tyler Hero is his, his name's bigger. He was on a bigger stage. He went to the finals. He went to the bubble. He dogged in the bubble. So that's why people know Tyler. That's why people feel like Tyler is better than him. Like, you look at Tyler on this list, bro. They got Tyler over Darius Garland, DeAndre Hunter, and Kyle Alexander Walker. Tyler Hill is not better than those players. And I'm really confused while I look at this list. And Jordan Poole is not on this list, bro. From 10 to 14, they are nowhere near better than Jordan Poole. Cam Johnson, Brandon Clark, PJ Washington, Rui Hachimura, Lou Dort, they're nowhere near better than Jordan Poole. 
Jordan Poole, as far as his draft class, is literally the most underrated player in his draft class. The only other player you could say is probably more underrated than him, Darius Garland. But you see with the, the report that dropped yesterday, most executives are picking Darius Garland to have a jump out season. So, Jordan Poole is the most underrated player in his draft class. And I'm expecting Jordan Poole to have a huge year. He fuck around with most improved player if he dog. He can do it, bro. I'm not saying he's going to come out here average 20 and shit. Like, if he comes out this year, like I'm expecting him to do, 16 and, 14, 16 and 4 is nothing to him. I think he can definitely average that off the bench. Now, the one thing that, like, scares me about Jordan Poole is I'm scared that it's going to take him a long time to reach his full potential. When I look at Jordan Poole, bro, he's an, he is an elite scorer that's only, like, 21. He is an elite scorer. Like I said, three-level scorer. Can score from anywhere on the court. Can finish on any side of the court. He is an elite scorer. But if you look at it, he's playing behind Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Draymond Green. They want to win right now. And he, he's capable of being on, on this team while winning. Like I said, he's going, to, he's going to have a good year off the bench. But like I said, bro, he can be one of the best shooting guards or slash point guards in the league. No, I'm not gonna say point guard because he is a decent playmaker, but I'm not gonna say that. Like he like some Trey Young shit. But like as far as young talent, bro, like you see how Houston they're finna get they're gonna get the keys to Jalen Green. Jordan Poole is a capable player of just getting the franchise keys to. That don't that might seem like a wild take, but I don't think people understand. Jordan Poole is a dog. Like last year, y'all can say, yeah, it was one year. But last year, bro, he sold a lot of potential that I didn't know he had. I knew he was a shooter coming out of um, Michigan. But as far as him being a scorer like he scored last season, with more shots, bro, he can average damn near 20 points in his league. If you look at it, bro, let me look at his shots right now. Basketball reference. I don't think people understand, bro. Jordan Poole's a dog. He only shot nine shots last season. He's a young talent. If he goes to a team like the Pistons and be the two next to Kate Cunningham or the Thunder and be the point guard next to... Nah, they already got a couple point guards over there. Um, What other team can use like a shooting guard slash so point guard? The Pacers... If they want to get young, which they should, should get young, because there's no reason they should just stay right here. They should just go back. Uh, go back to rebuilding. Um, another team like the Raptors, he would thrive in the Raptors. Like, teams that need scoring, he would he would average them in 20 points. Jordan Poole is an elite scorer. Just doesn't get the shots. He gets nine shots a game. That's, that's actually a good amount of shots, though. But if he's like, I think he's a young type talent talent that deserves like at least 15 shots a game he is a young star but he just he's behind Stephen Clay but he's, he's not gonna get that and it sucks but like he's gonna be able to get be um be on this team because he's able to do other stuff other than scoring like I say he's a playmaker he's a shooter spot-up shooter so he's gonna thrive but yeah I don't know if he's gonna be able to reach that star potential that a lot of people see because I, I that Bro, Jordan Poole's a dog. That's it for my Jordan Poole episode, man. Jordan Poole, I see you. You're a dog. One of my favorite young players, bro. He's a dog. He's a dog, bro. But, man, like I said, man, shout out to y'all, bro. Y'all really helped me out, man. The last few weeks, man, for my two videos to take off like that, I really needed that. Shout out to y'all. Thank y'all. Other than that, this is it for this episode. Peace out.